So I've spent a lot of time over the last few months trying to figure out what type of exhaust to build for the 308. And by a lot of time, I mean it has plagued me. Do I do some sort of center exit exhaust where the bumper was? Do I do some exhaust where the license plate used to be? Through the diffuser or even out the side of the car? I mean, the options are pretty limitless here, but this is a really big decision for me to make because not only is performance important, the aesthetics are pretty important to me too. I want something that doesn't scream, hey, there's a four banger in here but I think I've come up with a solution that's gonna look really good, look somewhat period correct for that old school supercar vibe, and pays a little bit of tribute to some of the old Ferrari race cars. In all, I think it's gonna turn out pretty good, so we're gonna have to see how far we can get done, because if you're wondering how an exhaust build over the weekend turned into redoing this entire corner of the shop, well, it's been a little bit of a wild ride. I'm excited to take you guys along. Let's dive in and see how far we get. So at the moment, we've got a big old Garrett G42 turbo hanging off the back of our engine, and it has a four inch V-band flange for an exhaust outlet. So I picked up some four inch stainless material from Vibrant Performance for us to build an exhaust with. We've got enough material and bends to work with from a single UJ, and I picked up some pie cuts to make some more complicated shapes out of. So let's talk about those. Pie cuts are pre-cut pieces of exhaust material, typically cut at angles of 15 degrees, and they're designed to allow you to make your own exhaust bends. And if you know what you're doing, you can make some really cool looking stuff, but if you're not a master welder, well, it tends to just kind of look messy, but that's a discussion for a different time. If I tape a bunch of our pie cut segments together as though they're tack welded, you can get a good idea of what it actually looks like. And the purpose here is multifaceted. For one, if we put it up next to a typical 4-inch stainless steel mandrel bend, you'll notice that the bend radius is significantly tighter on the pie cut pieces. Now while there are tight radius mandrel bends out there as well, pie cuts have another very helpful aspect, and that's the fact that they can be rotated on the axis of their cuts, which makes it very easy to create compound bends. And the individual pieces make it relatively simple to get the exact shape that you're looking to make. This is a lot harder to do with single bend segments. Now the reason that we need pie cuts is that we need to get out of the turbo exhaust outlet as quickly and as tightly as possible. And then we need to rapidly start heading towards the back of the car. And both of these would be tough to achieve with normal bends. The problem though, is that even with these tight pie cut radiuses, it just won't clear the chassis. It turns out that output flange that we need to mate to the turbo is a lot thicker than I initially thought. We've only got a few degrees of adjustment, and this just will not clear the chassis without taking some dire measures. I do have one idea though. Let's check these parts out on the workbench. This is a lot easier to show on the workbench. So this is the four inch flange uh, meant for this turbo. And as you can see, it fits nicely, would be held on with a V-band clamp. And we have the turbine diameter here, stepping up with a nice bevel, but then it just kind of flattens out and then comes up and then we bevel again out to our tube, which would sit on the inside of this. And that's a lot of transitioning and it's not very smooth. And fitting a four inch tube in the car is incredibly difficult. And it turns out if you take a three inch flange, sorry, three and a half, and you center it, that bevel ends at three and a half inches. So it would be a much smoother transition. Now this is smaller, but I checked with my buddy Dylan Hughes and confirmed that he runs this exact same turbo at a very similar power level. And he steps down from this flange to a three and a half inch exhaust all the way back. So I'm gonna give this a shot. I think that it should work fine. So let's machine all this stuff and see if we can either weld this to this or maybe Brett can work some magic and simply machine this to match this profile. Now I already know some of you guys are typing up comments or asking why I'm not putting an effort to make that four inch exhaust work. You don't like the idea of stepping down. Well, as said, I can confirm a three and a half inch exhaust works at this power level uh, with this turbo, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think the four inch is necessary. I also don't wanna cut the chassis to run the four inch exhaust because this isn't the turbo and the exhaust that we're gonna be running for most of the time. This is the big power turbo. Mainly we're gonna be aiming for eh, 600 or so from our G35 and that's gonna be a completely different setup. I wanna make sure the car can run either setup without having to have totally different rear ends with different cutouts for the exhausts and stuff. Ultimately, I think this makes a lot more sense, but if we're gonna go to three and a half, 
well, I don't have any three and a half inch material, so we're just sitting on our hands. We gotta find something else to do. I'm sure most of you guys are at least loosely familiar with this back corner of the shop. Pretty much the only time I go back here is to use the brake or the shear, and that's partially because it's just messy and cluttered, and it's become kind of a storage corner for everything else that doesn't have a home. Not to mention the fact that half the lights don't work, it's dark. I just don't like it back here. But over the weekend, I managed to score a full set of pallet racks for a hundred bucks thanks to my buddy Brett. So I figured, why not try transforming that corner of the shop while I'm waiting for that three and a half inch material? And honestly, I can't even put into words how excited I am with how this turned out. This went from my least favorite place in the entire building to being one of the best changes I've made in this unit in the 10 years that I've been here. The new work tabletops, the lighting, the shelves for each individual project to keep all my spare parts and what I'm working on. I mean, this is a dream come true and I should have done this years ago. It took all weekend to pull off and it wasn't progress on the Ferrari, but honestly, I think this was well worth the time investment and it totally transformed this place. Okay, now let's get back to that 308 and build an exhaust. Brett has the turbine housing because he's doing some machine work on it so that it'll adapt to this three and a half inch V-band flange. The tubing that I'm working with is called a 1D bend. It means that the center line radius of the bend matches the diameter of the tubing, and that's just about the same as pie cuts will get you. This is as tight as a mandrel bend can get. I'm using these because we know it's just about all we can do to get out of the turbo as quickly as possible. And we're gonna need that even with this smaller tubing size. But this is all we can get done until we get that turbine housing back. So let's move on to the wastegate dump tube. By default, it's a two inch diameter tube and we wanna flare that up significantly. So I'm putting on a step that will take it from two to two and a half inches, but that's not all we're gonna put on it. Nope, we're gonna stack another cone and go from two and a half to three and a half inches in diameter. This is gonna match our exhaust pipe. And yes, admittedly, this is overkill for a wastegate dump pipe, but it's part of an aesthetic choice that I've made so that I can have two exhaust tips at the back of the car. And I think this is a good compromise on how to accomplish that, but we'll talk more about that in a bit. Fortunately, building this pipe is really simple as the trajectory path is about as easy as it can get. So after a number of installs and removals to get it just right, we just have to tack all the pieces together and fit it into the car. Before any of the pieces have gotten tacked together, I've made sure to clean the edges of all of them. And for the insides, I'm using a small drum sander on the end of my die grinder to do this quickly and effectively. I'll also be purging the entire inside of this exhaust system once we go to finish weld it. For now though, we just wanna tack it all together enough to hold its position and so that we can mount it into the car. Now we get to bolt it into place, take a step back and see what we've got. Now this is only one exhaust pipe of two, but I think we're onto something. Initially, I thought I'd have straight pipes coming out of the back, but having looked at this one at an angle, I really like the way that it follows the tail panel of the car, and I think it adds a little bit of attitude to the overall style of the exhaust system. I also like that it's somewhat reminiscent of the Karma Ferrari 308 Group 5 car as well. I'm excited to see what the rest of this is gonna look like, but we can't finish it until we get the turbine housing back from Brett. So let's move on to another project while we wait. Over the weekend, my buddy Dan made another trip over to the shop, and he resumed welding some of the aluminum parts that are in the engine bay, mainly the water-to-air intercooler and some of the charge piping. I'm having him tackle this because I want it to turn out better than I know I'm capable of. I'm still learning to weld aluminum, and while I can stick it together, I won't make it look as good as he can. There are still a few other parts and pieces to weld up in the engine bay, but with the charge air cooler out of the way and some of the charge piping finished up, we're one step closer to being able to fire this car up for the first time. As you can see, Dan did an awesome job with the inlet and outlet for the water to air intercooler and the charge piping that he tackled. And I'm really excited to get this job all finished up. But that does bring us to another aspect we can tackle while we're waiting on those parts. Originally, my oil catch can was mounted next to my charge piping, and the oil filter was mounted to the back of the car, but since we're getting rid of the oil cooler, I've decided to swap the position of these two components. This job is going to be made easy by the fact that I bought a swiveling mount when I initially bought my oil filter housing. All we're going to have to do is make a new bracket based on the same one that held up the catch can because the chassis tabs are still there to hold this thing up. 
For once, I finally made a template out of good old-fashioned pen and paper and knocked a bracket out. Although I did wind up having to do this a second time in order to get enough clearance between the oil filter and the charge piping itself. The end result worked out great, and the advantage here is that we can vastly simplify the plumbing for the oil system. We simply run one line out of the pump and into this housing, and then out of the housing and back into the cylinder block since we don't have to run lines for an oil cooler anymore. And we'll run that catch can at the back of the car because we need space for a much bigger one, but we'll touch on that in a later episode. Back to that turbo. All right, it's in the nick of time. I don't really have much more time to spend here at the shop today. I gotta get home and edit this episode, but Brett just dropped off the turbine housing for the turbo, and he pulled some really trick shit. He machined the housing to accept the three, in, or three and a half inch V-band flange instead of cutting the old one off so that we could weld a new one on. He got really crafty with the lathe and I wish I had been there to record it because he showed me some pictures of his setup and let's just say there's a reason Brett is the best machinist I know. He had to get the tooling in there and pass the Garrett lettering on the turbo to machine this thing. It's pretty tricky. I'm super excited. Look at how this fits. As said, he has completely remachined the V-band flange on the turbo. So no longer is this a four inch, it's a three and a half inch V-band flange. He made it meet that original taper inside. So the bevel or the pipe actually sits right up to this. We've got really nice flow characteristics. It should work really well. He used the piece that I got done yesterday. And he just did an amazing job here. I mean, I know I sing Brett's praises a lot, but this is why. Now, I've genuinely only got about an hour, maybe an hour and a half before I've got to get home and edit, but we're going to put this turbo back in the car, bolt this piece back up, and see if we can at least mock up the rest of this thing. I'm going to rush and see how quickly I can get done. Let's go. Man, just look at the amount of room that we have to work with now. I could not be more stoked on this. Brett absolutely killed it. So now all we need to do is get that tube pointed out the back of the car to match that. Now in the name of getting this job done as quickly as possible, I simply time-lapsed it all in one shot. I also got really lucky on some of the tube work and got this on the first try. Now admittedly, there's a little bit of finessing to do here, but this is a pretty good look at what the final exhaust system will probably look like, and I'm really into it. I think the dual exhaust setup looks really good and is nice and symmetric on the back of the car, and I think it has a really good high performance look to it, and it's only going to look better once we have that rear mesh and a diffuser under the back of the car. Once these are all finished up, I imagine I'll Cerakote them white as a tribute to some of the old Ferrari race cars, and I doubt I'll run any tips as I'm a pretty big fan of the simple cut stainless pipe. And as a whole, I think this is about the best exhaust system we're gonna come up with for a single turbo four cylinder motor. All right, now that, that I'm into. I'm super stoked with how this is shaping up. Needs a little bit of finessing, a little bit of fine tuning. We also need to scotch bright the whole things, get them welded up, but, I'm pretty stoked. I think it's going to look really good, especially from a really low angle. I'm excited. This is uh, it's just right. So that's probably a good stopping point for the episode. I'd love to get this fully welded, and I know I have a habit of not welding the things in the same episode, but I'm out of time. i got to get this episode edited. So Friday's episode, I'm going to try to knock this stuff out, get this stuff finished up. i got to come up with a solution for hangers. Need some more mounting and support in there. We've got the oil filter housing relocated, which means I've got a couple of oil lines to remake. I've got some fittings on the way. Once that's done, once the exhaust is welded up, it really is just the water inlet and outlet on the intercooler. And it's pretty much fabrication wise, ready to fire up. I mean, we got to fill it with fluids. I need the body harness to give some things power. Got to do a couple other small things, but that's a, that's a complete engine, more or less, I think, pretty sure. So I'm getting pretty excited. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I had a ton of fun. I'm on cloud nine right now. I think this looks sick. So I'll catch you guys at the end of the week. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. You don't want to miss it. We're making progress. We're going to get this thing going pretty soon. 
at least I hope, fingers crossed. I'll catch you guys on Friday. Thanks as always for the support.